Good evening, guys. So I will start with a very easy question to you. How many of you here own a computer? Don't be shy. <laughs> OK, this is exactly what I expected. Well, you know, today in our computers, we contain our lives. We have photos, we have documents, we have everything in our computers. Imagine if someone can steal your computer. Imagine if someone can own everything that you contain in your computer. Imagine, for example, an hacker that can have access to your browse history. Of course, in our daily life, we can visit uh, the Financial Times, the Washington Post, the unibocconi.it, and then you porn. We can access to everything. We can, um, of course, you guys, when you are in front of your computer during the evening, you actually are in front of the screen and then you access to everything of, of, through the internet. So imagine when this happens to someone, uh, to if, if our computer is, access, uh, is entered by a person who is on the other side of the globe. It can be a Russian hacker, it can be a Chinese hacker that actually knows your photos, your documents. You can write everything on your computer. But well, guys, this happens to us and our data, our personal details are very, very important for us. But imagine if the same thing happens to multinational companies. Imagine if they, can ima if they can enter the bank accounts of these multinational companies. They can enter the database in which there are our personal details, the personal details of all of you, and this happens very, very often. So maybe in this moment, someone is observing the screen of your computer, but maybe someone is observing the screen of the Nestlé database or uh, of Zara and so on. Could you imagine that? Are you really aware of the fact that actually, at the end of the day, everything that we, co we have in our computer is not safe? Technological tools are deeply unsafe, are inherently unsafe. They make our lives easier. But today, we can, no we can be observed in every moment of our lives because we, c we have lives in our PC. But let's see some types of cyber crimes. Could you mention some types of cyber crimes? Well, there is a link. Untaxed financial operations, cracks and weapon sales through internet, interaction among criminals by use of emails and other technological platforms. Do you know Telegram? Telegram is very safe for terrorists and for uh, criminal organization. They can interact among them being very, very sure about the fact that they are not going to be intercepted. Theft of password and accessing network codes, unlawful information copying, including commercial and confidential ones, and then, of course, hacker attacks. Hackers can do whatever they want. They can access, they access my online banking, actually, one time. One day, when I was in the United States, I saw that actually someone was buying stuff on Amazon uh, in Norwegian, in Norway, in Finland. They just used my credit card and that's it. And there was a debt of uh, 7,600 euros on my, uh, on my credit card. This is crazy, but it can happen every, every day. Of course, this is a very legal problem. This is a very, uh, a very, very serious legal problem. And you know, guys, there is no real legal definition in any law or in any regulation. There, is just, um, there are just some case law of the European Commission which actually mention this problem and define uh, cybercrime as criminal acts that are committed online by using electronic communication networks and information systems. But this is very general. I mean, it doesn't mean anything. You don't have a piece of law, a piece of written law, which actually takes, into, uh, takes seriously into consideration the problem of cybercrime. But actually, nowadays, cybercrime is really, is really a piece of criminal law. 
can be considered as a piece of Korean law as itself. Well, we can distinguish between three types of cyber crime, three big, very, very broad categories. First of all, we have cyber crimes which are specifically related to the internet, such as attacks against information system or phishing. Then we have the online fraud and forgery. So large scale fraud can be committed online through instruments such as identity theft, phishing or spamming. Of course, you receive tons of these emails where they ask to insert the data of your credit card or maybe they ask you to, they, they actually reported you, to you a problem with your credit card, maybe with post pay or PayPal and so on. I received tons and tons of this kind of emails. Well, actually, we can ex experience this kind of stuff every day and they are very dangerous because of course we can be smart but can, we can be also very fool, very stupid. And then there are illegal online content including pornographic material involving children, incit incitement to racism, incitement to violence, glorification of violence and xenophobia. We experience every day, even on Facebook, even on Twitter, the fact that actually, actually, this ki uh, the, any kind of content can be published uh, on websites and social media. And uh, people sometimes are not aware of the fact that they are committing a crime. Of course, it is a very serious problem. But then we have also to take into consideration the fact that cyber crimes uh, have very, very uh, specific characteristic. First of all, the technological device can be the aim, so an hacker who wants to access the computer in order to stall all your personal data. But then it can be also the tool, of course, uh, as cyber, st cyber stalking. Stalking in the past was very difficult. You should phone the person and you can be intercepted by the police and so on. But now cyber stalki uh, stalking is, is uh, it's further much easy, more, easy, more easier through the internet. You can just write to the victim on Facebook, on Twitter, on WhatsApp, on Telegram, and so on. And then, of course, uh, of course, how much have we, uh, of course, we hear every day about pedopornography on the internet. There are some crimes which nowadays are absolutely easier to be done through the internet. So now we should take into consideration some famous cases which were very, uh, which actually are a kind of tricky. So the first one is the Sony Pictures Entertainment Act. So um, Sony, uh, Sony Pictures Studios were producing a, a movie called The Interview, which, was, uh, which plot was based on the assassination of Kim Jong-un, the dictator of North Korea. Actually, an hacker group called the Guardians of Peace leaked the dunk, uh, access and leaked the database of uh, Sony Pictures Entertainment and, uh, are re and uh, actually access to, um, access to, um, uh, to a very confidential report uh, regarding Sony, uh, Sony Pictures and regarding the creation of this movie. There are many suspects about, about the fact that actually the, um, the, the hacker attack was done by, North by the North Korean government. Then another case is the Ashley Madison Act. The Ashley Madison Act is uh, a kind of funny but even tragic case. Have you ever heard about Ashley Madison? Well, actually Ashley Madison is a, um, is a website which main focus uh, is um, extramarital affairs. So actually this group of hackers had access uh, and published the database of this website and so the names, the surnames and the home addresses and then the declared sexual fantasies of those people were published on the internet. This led, of course, to public shame, but it led, it led also to, to suicide. There were people who had so many troubles that actually they suicide themselves. And then Target, 
the target case involved this very big multinational company which is very popular in North America which is Target it is similar to Zara or Ikea or H&M and so the data and the credit cards of more than 40 million customers were published and were used by these hackers in order to, make, in order to buy stuffs all over the world actually Target during the period between 2013 and 2014 had to pay damages for more than 300 millions of dollars so you can understand how even the most sensitive details such as the one involving extramarital affairs are in the end of these people you should reflect on that but then now if we look at the very at the very current situation we should take into consideration a, a very very dangerous phenomena such as ISIS well ISIS is very dangerous because actually ISIS has today the possibility to deal with all these technological devices that were not existing when Al-Qaeda arised in 2001 in fact, if you think about the 11th September attack, after the 11th September attack, Osama bin Laden recorded a speech in Arabic and sent it to Al Jazeera, the Arabic television. But you know, so the, this, uh, this, um, actually this tape trip was transmitted on Al Jazeera and that's it, and then some television reported it and so on. But nowadays, uh, what ISIS can do is to publish contents on social media, such as Facebook and Twitter, and then the, um, these speeches can be translated in less than 10 minutes all over the world. So this makes ISIS so, so, so dangerous. And this is the reason why actually ISIS is becoming so powerful because in the past when Al-Qaeda Al was acting people had to go to Afghanistan in order to train themselves but nowadays you can train yourself even from your computer every one of you here can become uh, an, uh, an ISIS terrorist you can for example um, use some techniques in order to make you anonymous on the internet and surf very very safely on the internet so nowadays uh, ISIS is really becoming a media phenomenon ISIS publish on the internet comics, videos, cartoons and there are people who really want to become an ISIS supporter because at the end of the day there are some people even that don't commit terrorist attacks but they really claim these attacks because uh, it's like a social status Maybe for us it's crazy, but there are some areas and some people who really need this kind of stuff in order to be recognized by the society. So, but now we should take into consideration why it is so hard to fight cybercrime. We already understood that actually, um, that actually, uh, cyber crimes are characterized by a real, real huge transboundary, um, transboundary content. So actually the victim, and the, the victim and the aggressor usually are located in different areas of the world. And this makes everything easier. But then there is also a problem of enforcement. Because uh, as I already said, as I already said, uh, from the legal point of view, laws are really different all around the world. For example, spam uh, is not considered a criminal offense uh, in more than 60% of the countries of the world. So there are some countries in which you can go to jail for spamming, but there are some countries in which you have just to pay a fine. And then, of course, there is also a police problem because you have to coordinate all the effort, and this is very expensive. And then, which is the other reason why fighting against cybercrime is so difficult? Because the web is huge. It tends to infinity. Have you ever heard about the deep web and the dark web? 
So actually, you should imagine the web as an iceberg. And uh, the, the web that we access every day actually is just the top of this iceberg. Because uh, if you use some softwares uh, such as TOR, you can actually go anonymously on the internet and surf a very, very secret part of the web. Because, you know, potentially, the internet surf is provider, who is the guy, who is the person, who is the, the company, which actually every day has the control of when and where people access on the internet. If you normally go on the internet, the internet service provider actually knows when and where you are going on the internet. But if you use this software, which is called the TOR, you can access the internet and, and actually you can hide your IP number. So since you have hide your IP number, you can just enter this part of the web, which is totally secret. At the first step, you can find your personal details. So very basically, even your email or your, um, or your bank account is part of the deep web because it's something that can be accessed only through the use of a password. So it cannot be indexed by a normal search engine. But then, if you go step by step, if you go to the bottom of the iceberg, you can find the unthinkable. You can, find, you can buy drugs, you can buy weapons, you can buy people. The deep web is used by ISIS and by criminal organization in order, uh, in order to empower human trafficking. So guys, this is just, these are just some tips in order to understand how useful is technology. Technology makes our lives easier, of course, we cannot live without technologies today. If you want to use car sharing, if you want to, if you want to, to see your marks at the, at the final exam, of course, we cannot live without technology. But you have to take into consideration that all, of all this information one day can be used against of you. So be aware about the fact that everything that we are doing, even this video, is going to remain on the web and everyone can use it against me every day in every moment of the life. I don't know, maybe my, uh, one day when I'm going to, to work somewhere. This is, going to be, this is going to be not appreciated by someone. So I hope that my speech was interesting. And thank you very much. And now we open the floor to the debate.